Let me know if this sounds like you. You have a USB microphone that you use for your Twitch streams or your YouTube videos, and you took it out of the box, you set it up, connected everything, and you went live. But you're not happy with how it sounds. But what if I told you there's a few filters that you can add in OBS to make this microphone sound so much better? Before I switched over to an XLR microphone, I was using a USB microphone. First, the Blue Yeti, and then this guy, the Elgato Wave 1. And a lot of people always praised how my microphone sounded and how did I get it to sound so good. And I always told people I have filters running through my OBS for my microphone input to make it sound closer to an XLR microphone. And honestly, hearing my new microphone side by side with this microphone running the filters I have, there's not that much of a difference. So if you want your microphone to sound so much better and as close to an XLR microphone as you can, stick around the video and I'll show you how you can set it up. And remember, if you like the video, leave a like down below. And if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, hit the subscribe button. It shows me that you guys like these videos and you want me to make more of them for you. I also stream live on Twitch every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from noon to four central standard time. We start every stream off in just chatting. So if there are any questions I didn't answer in this video, come on by the stream and we can talk more about it. All right, so let's just jump into the video. Now to give you an idea of what this microphone sounds like with the filters versus without the filters, but currently what you're listening to is this microphone with all the filters I have set in OBS. But if I turn them off, now this is what the microphone sounds like without any filters and with the noise gate pretty high up like it comes out of the box. It's not bad per se, but you can hear me tapping on my desk. If I click my mouse, you can probably hear that or my keyboard. You can hear snaps on the other end of this microphone. And so if you're tired of people being able to hear your mouse clicks or your keyboard or any background noises that go on, these filters are gonna help you out. There's an additional optional thing that we can do, which is called an equalizer, which can help your microphone sound even more full, like an XLR microphone. Another tip as well, before I show you how to set it all up, you wanna have your microphone pretty close to your mouth. And with our noise gate and suppression filters, if the microphone is too far away from you, it might cut your voice in and out because it's not loud enough for the microphone filters to pick up. So just keep that in mind. All right guys, so here we are on my desktop and I'm gonna show you what filters you wanna to apply to your microphone and what settings you wanna change to make your microphone sound more professional for your Twitch streams or your YouTube videos. So depending on your USB microphone, most microphones have a gain knob or a gain setting. The higher the gain on your microphone, the stronger the microphone signal is, meaning it allows more sound to come in. A problem with a high gain setting is it allows more sound in so that you can hear more background noise and that's what we're trying to cut out. So on the Elgato Wave 1, what you would wanna do is go over to your Wavelink software that I have open right here. On your microphone channel, click on this downward arrow and then where it says input gain, you wanna turn this down. Now for reference, I always set it down to around 30 to 25. Just play around with it and see. It will depend on how close the microphone is to your mouth as well. On a Blue Yeti microphone, you actually have a physical knob that says gain on the back of it. Turn that down to almost zero or around 10%. So once we've fixed our gain on our microphone, we're gonna go into OBS. So to add filters, what we're going to do is in the audio mixer tab right here, on your microphone, click on the cog wheel, and then you're gonna to go to where it says filters. Click on that, and this is where we're gonna add all of our filters. So go ahead and click on the plus sign on the bottom left to add a filter. And the first one we're going to add is a compressor. And you can name it whatever you like, I'm just gonna keep it on compressor. And what a compressor is, is that it just makes your loud sounds quieter. So if you get louder on your streams, the compressor will tone down the loud sounds so that it's not blowing out your viewers' ears. Now, I'm not an audiophile, and I don't know exactly what every single setting does, but I'm just gonna show you what I have when I have these filters on, and just go ahead and copy them. I'll have a link in the description below that goes over all of the settings and exactly their meanings behind them and what they do. So I keep the ratio at 10 to one, our threshold, I keep it at 18, our attack at six milliseconds, our release at 60 milliseconds, our output gain at zero, and then our side chain ducking source at none. So that's our compressor. And then we're gonna go back down to our bottom left 
and we're going to add a limiter. So what the limiter does is it prevents audio from peaking, uh, which can cause clipping and distortion. So again, if you get too loud or if you scream into your microphone, you don't want your microphone to peak and get distorted because then it makes your quality sound really bad. So this is going to help with that. So I keep our threshold at eight and then our release I keep at 60. Now for the next setting, I use a noise suppression. Now what the noise suppression is going to do is it's going to remove background noise. So keyboard clicks, mouse clicks, a fan in the background. It does mild background noise suppression. Honestly, the noise suppression is going to help you out a lot to cut out that background noise and so that your microphone only captures the sound of your voice. I usually change this to the lower CPU usage so that it works on more computers. And what works for me is I put the suppression level at around 26. But again, this depends on how far away your microphone is and how loud the background noise is in your environment. And then our last one I'm going to add is our noise gate. Now the noise gate is sort of like the noise suppression in which the noise suppression cuts out mild background noise like a keyboard click or a PC fan while the noise gate can cut off background noise when you're not talking, so bigger sounds. So for our closed threshold, I have that set at 32. Our open threshold, I have that set at 29. And then I keep the attack time, hold time, and release time on default. So 25, 200, and 150. And then after that, go ahead and click close. And then there you go. This is your microphone now with all of those filters running through it. And so it should sound better. It should sound more clear and full and honestly, just more professional. These were the exact settings that I was using on my Elgato Wave 1 or my Blue Yeti microphone. Now, as a bonus, if you want to add an equalizer, the OBS, it's actually really simple to do and can make your microphone sound even better. So what you want to do is go to your web browser and then type in Reaper plugins, and then it should be your first link right here. And then on this page, go down to where it says replugs and then click on 64 bit or 32 bit, depending on your operating system. Most of the time it's going to be 64. Go ahead and open that file up click on the agree, and then we're going to just install everything onto our computer. And once you get that message that says replugs are now installed, go ahead and go back into your OBS. And we're going to go back to that cog wheel, click on filters again. And then on the plus sign on the bottom left, you're going to click on the VST plugins. I'm going to click on that and we can rename it. So I'm going to name it EQ or equalizer, click on OK. And then you're going to want to click on this drop down menu. Now they're kind of named funny, but for the equalizer, you want to click on REA EQ standalone. It's this one right here. And then what you want to do is open the plugin interface. So it's going to bring up this equalizer that, as you can see right here. So what this is, is the left side of the graph right here are your low frequencies. The middle are your mid frequencies and then the right side is your high frequency so and the settings that you're going to use for your eq depend on how you sound and your voice tone and your pitch so i have a lower voice so it might sound different than your eq settings and your voice tone so what you want to do first is you're going to want to click on the one and then where it says type you're going to want to change this to band and then do the same thing for the number four on the right side. Make sure that it's highlighted and then click on band. And once you have these outer two on band, then we can start messing around with it. But here are the EQ settings that I have for the microphone that I'm using. Again, raising your lows will make it sound boomier and more podcasty. And then you might want to raise up your highs as well, just to balance it out a little bit and make it sound more clear. But once you're done here, you can close out of that, but now you're all set. All right, guys, so after that, your microphone should sound better. It should sound more professional and full, and it should be cutting out your background noise as well. And let me know in the comments down below if you found this video helpful and if you have any more questions on how to set up your microphone. Again, the equalizer is completely optional, but adding the equalizer will make it sound even closer to an XLR microphone. And it might save you a lot of money if you've been thinking about switching over to XLR. But anyway, guys, stay safe and I'll catch you live on Twitch.